this video I'm going to cover what I do to uh, sort of like uh, upscale or enhance a video from like for you know DVD quality all the way up to 1080p. Um, so I guess the first step is you're going to typically we just you're going to need to convert the movie to uh, about 24 frames per second. I usually use a, hand, a program like Handbrake to do it. I'm not going to really go into how to use Handbrake. I'm going to just show you what I do to like deinterlace it and make sure that it's at the proper uh, frame rate that Topaz needs. Um, so I'm going to throw... I'm just going to put a movie in. Um, again, I'm not going to go over it how to acquire these movies. I'm not gonna, you acquire movies however you wish. I'm not gonna show anybody how to like get these things. I'm just gonna kind of explain what I do to make them look better. Um, okay. So there, yeah, I usually, I have a preset set. I kind of just do this H.SD24. That's like a custom preset that I've made, but you can really do this easily. I just leave all this the same. And in filters, I make sure you select Detelecine as default and Decomb, Deinterlace, and I just leave it at default. I've tried all of these and I found that default looks the same, so I just leave it at default. Um, I leave all this off. I don't want denoise or anything like that. I think 4000 is good and I would keep two passes and, and I always just do a turbo first pass and handbrake and if you want to go nuts, you can just do it. It's very slow. I usually just leave it at medium and it's fine. Um, it comes out good. Um, if you're doing something longer, like a, like a full feature length movie, like over an hour, you're going to want to take, you're going to want to get rid of the audio because Topaz uh, does not play well with audio tracks. It's something you need to add later. Um, so again, there, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get rid of the subtitle too. I'll leave the chapters in. I don't think that once you process it through, uh, Topaz, the chapters go away anyway, so I don't think it matters. It doesn't slow down the process. So again, you would, um, then you just start the encode and make, you know, you'll have it, you end up with a video that's at this frame rate, which is what, what you want. I guess I'll show you where uh, the Topaz page and and it's a it's a two hundred dollar program. I mean, I like it. I think it's worth two hundred dollars in my opinion. A lot of stuff. Sometimes things just you just can't get them on Blu-ray, and you already have it in DVD, and you want to make it watchable, especially when you have a big screen like like a projector screen. You're gonna they kind of it's going through a lot of trouble, but I think it's worth it. And one of the reasons why I I do this. Especially, uh, I do the trailer thing because I've noticed that you know YouTube doesn't have some of the trailers on YouTube, especially for old movies, are really bad quality. And I don't know, I just makes it's very satisfying to take something that looks like crap and make it look a lot better. So that's why I do that. I'm really not doing it for the views. If you look at my videos, all the trailers have very low views. I'm doing it just just to put it out there. And if somebody notices it, great. Also, I guess my, so Topaz throughout the, I mean, I started using Topaz like last year, like early last year, I'm gonna say April or May, or Mar March, April, May. And the program's gotten only better. Uh, they keep putting out updates. So it, this company is actually supporting it. I think, I think I got it and it was like a 1.2 iteration. Now it's at 1.8.1 and it's gotten much better. So I'm going to bring in the trailer for Requiem for a Dream. I, so these are the models, right? There's all these models. Right now, I think the best ones are these Artemis ones. I used to really like Gaia. So I guess the first thing you got to do is determine how, what kind of quality you're dealing with. Most of the time, if you're dealing with a pretty good quality file with a not, not a lot of compression, you can probably just set it to medium quality and call it a day and just take it straight to 1080p if that's if that's what you want to do. You can also just take it to 720 or whatever. You, if you want to be really bold, you can take it to 4K. Personally, uh, with DVD quality stuff, I would not 
go straight to 4K. I mean, if you're doing some kind of production work where you want to take some kind of some footage from 1080p that you have and convert it to 4K, it would probably work here. I mean, 1080 to 4K is probably is it looks okay. Um, it doesn't extract. It's a little more detailed, but you, you know you honestly have to play with these models and see which one works for best. Sometimes the Artemis ones work better. Sometimes it sits guy up. These Day Fidelity's ones are good too because you can actually play with sharpness, deep block, and noise reduction independently, and you know tune it to how you like it. You know that uh, that's a little more time consuming. I find the, they got these tuned pretty darn well. I mean, for some of these trailers, I'll start. I'll do one pass at low quality and do the next one at medium or even high, and and that it's been working well for me. Again, if you're doing a longer video, like a, a feature film, you're gonna want to you're gonna want to uncheck keep audio. Oh, I mean. You're gonna have to take out the audio in the first place because Topaz doesn't play well with audio, I've noticed. So it's just better. But for a short clip like a trailer, it can handle keeping the audio and everything stays in sync and all that. So apparently the issue with audio is that Top the Topaz Video Enhanced does not like multi-channel audio, so it can, it can only process uh, stereo audio or, or no more than two-channel audio. So I'm gonna show you what this looks like now when I use this model. I guess probably the best way would be show you a side-by-side -side from the original to the, the final 1080 version. I mean you can see it's a little it's a little more detailed. You can see the wrinkles a little clearer. Again there's nothing that you really there's no way to really make a tint like a, a DVD look like a Blu-ray but as far as what I've seen this is the best this is the best I've, I've, I've come across. I'm going to quickly show you how I extract audio from a file. I use this program called Rip, Rip Bot 264 been using it for years and it's my favorite video conversion softwares. Um, I use it probably more than Handbrake. Uh, so I'm going to just show you what I do. I'm going to throw in Requiem for a Dream and I'm going to show that, that's the name of the, of the program. And here you can see that it came uh, so this is the total length of the clip, and it has a Dolby Digital uh, track, which is also known as AC3. You're gonna hit this little button here, and all you do is just throw it in to like a folder. You just drag and drop it from here to here, and that's the AC3 file. So when you process the video, you can rejoin it together. Just so I can easily identify, you just rename it, just call it Requiem, because file folders empty anyway. Now I'm going to show you the process of reuniting the audio file that we extracted earlier along with the new processed clip. So I'm just going to make believe that I had a processed file, a long file without, with, that didn't have audio in it. So it would look something like this, no audio. And all you would do is just go into here and then find this file. So I put it in, point of no return, and here Requiem and hit open. And then it just puts it all together again and all you have to do is hit done and hit start. I should also mention that there are other programs to do this. Uh, correct me if somebody could correct me in the, in the comments but you can use uh, I think AviSynth is one or it's FFmpeg. One of those are popular for doing this kind of thing but I found that this is the easiest way to do it. So one thing I should talk about is like a uh, minimum hardware in my experience. I've used um, three different video cards uh, with this program. Um, so uh, they recommend the GTX 1080, which I would agree. That would be a bare minimum, honestly. I have a 2080 uh, Super and the difference between, because I've used the 1070 and I've used the 1660 a GTX 1660 and the difference is night and day once you get an RTX card with the tensor cores it's like it's in, it, it's like it goes from maybe one to two frames a second to up to ten frames a second it's like a massive increase and you can it used to take me 
well, a long time to process files sometimes. So um, I would definitely don't even think about using this if you're gonna if you don't have at least a 1080. I would say 1070 minimum. Uh, I would recommend getting a definitely recommend a 2060 at least because that would you know in, it substantially increase the speed of your of, of this and it would make it makes it bearable. Um, it goes from um, something that it would take over a day so at times um, to at most an overnight thing. Or you just, you know, you go to bed, you, you set it, and then you go to bed, and then it's ready in, in the morning. Um, but it's even faster in a lot of cases, um, especially when you're going to lower resolutions. Um, so, yeah. So definitely, and you're going to want to... Uh, so I'd say the GPU is a, hell, is a lot more important than the CPU. Uh, but yeah, you would probably want at least the quad-core CPU as well. All right, so I prepared a couple of uh, clips so you can see like the before and after, like right side by side. I split the screen right in half so you can see that easily. this uh, informative please like and subscribe and uh, I'll see you in the next one